Hey there Internet, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you another edition on the benefits of board games. And this week I'm going to be finishing my look at academic teaching and I'm going to be talking about trivia. And I did touch on this slightly last week when I was talking about geography before I went on to talk about maps, how there are trivia games that will also help with geography. But this week I'm just focusing on trivia as a whole because it is a very broad topic and it very much is a topic as a whole that games cover. Obviously some trivia games will focus in on a specific aspect of trivia such as it might be geography, it might even be pop culture such as a computer game or a TV show, etc. But I'm just going to talk about it as a whole in general. So the first game I want to talk about is Trivial Pursuit. Huh, I don't seem to have it here. Oh, that's right, it's because I hate it, yes. But I'm kind of in the minority here because Trivia Pursuit is probably the most popular trivia game there is. And it's not actually Trivial Pursuit's fault per se that I don't like it. It's just that nature of trivia game that I don't like as a whole. Because the problem with trivia games is you either know the answer or you don't know the answer. If you know the answers, you're going to win. If you don't know the answers, you're going to lose. It is that simple. And obviously this holds true with Trivial Pursuit. So for those of you who don't know how Trivial Pursuit works, you have a board that's kind of a ring with some spokes into the middle and you have to collect correct answers of the different categories basically and then make your way into the middle. But of course the way this works is on your turn you'll roll the dice, you'll move a number of spaces, you'll land on a space, that dictates the category you're answering. Then if you answer correctly you get another go. If you answer wrong, your turn's over. So you can see how if you're really smart, you'll just breeze through in your first go because you'll just take turn after turn after turn till you've won the game. And if you're really dumb, you'll never make any progress at all. So, and I say smart and dumb, it's not actually smart and dumb, is it? It's the ability to recall facts, but society tends to dictate that is smart or dumb. Now, I wouldn't class myself as a dumb person but I am terrible at trivia games. I can't recall facts in that way. Um, maybe it's because as a child, I did not play games such as Trivial Pursuit. Maybe you did and you're much better at it. But the problem I have with this game is you cannot have fun and be losing. And that's a really big issue. But trivia games can be useful for teaching facts. As I say, maybe the reason I'm no good at them is because I never played them. So how do we get around this? Well, there's a couple of options I'm aware of. And the first one's probably the biggest option and strangely the one I've not played. And that is Wits and Wagers. And as with Trivial Pursuit, it has spawned a lot of different versions. So you can try different versions out. And the reason this is good over something like Trivial Pursuit is because there is a game behind it. There's this betting mechanic. So yes, it's good to be able to know the answers, but it's not key to win the game to be able to know the answers. You just have to bet whether or not you think someone else knows the answer. So that can work really nicely to make a better game. And it is one that I'd like to try at some point, but just have never had the chance. The next one I'm going to talk about is probably a bit, a bit too narrow for this kind of trivia topic, but I can't really think where else it would fit in. And that is timeline. And the reason I say this is narrow is because it's only about dates. So if you don't know this game at all, the way it works is you'll have a hand of cards and on those cards, you will have images and words as well. It will tell you what it is. Um, it will be like an event or an item and you've got to say you're trying to tell when this thing happened. And on the table you'll be creating a timeline of events. So it'll start off with just one thing and you've got to kind of decide what well, did this happen before or after this thing. 
and then you put it down, you reveal. If you're right, then great, your card stays down. It's just about getting rid of your cards. So what I like about Timeline is you're able to kind of get a more idea about history and time periods in general and when things happened. And you only have to be roughly good to enjoy it. And yes, it does still have that issue that general trivia games have, that if you don't know anything at all, no idea at all, you're not going to enjoy it. And if you know too much, you're not going to enjoy it. There's kind of this sweet spot in the middle where you have a vague idea and you'll enjoy it. And as I say, with trivia games, you need everyone to be in that section really in order to enjoy it. Whereas with Timeline, it is reasonably solitaire. It's kind of a solitaire race to get rid of your cards, but you're still guessing at other people's turns. So it is fun and enjoyable to keep you engaged. But what do you think about trivia games? Is there one that you think is better? Is there one you think I should try that solves that whole you must know things in order to enjoy it? Is there one that you can enjoy without knowing the, all the answers? Why don't you let me know in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter? So as I said, this is gonna be the last of the benefits on board games series looking at academic knowledge. So we will still touch a bit on teaching, but it won't be teaching like you would have in school. It will just be general, pot potentially life skills, etc. But why don't you join me next week for another edition of the benefits of board games and you can see where we're going from there. And I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. And of course, if you have, please do share it with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel. And also you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook and also on Twitter. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.